hello everyone how are you welcome back to anthocyanins again this lecture we will be discussing the part 2 of anthocyanins so far uh, talking about the learning outcome we have discussed the definition of anthocyanins and significance of anthocyanins and also we have seen certain examples of anthocyanins and natural distribution of anthocyanins and we started little bit about the chemistry of anthocyanins in previous lecture this lecture we will continue again with the anthocyanin chemistry mainly uh, anthocyanin chemistry when we talk we will discuss about their stability stability of anthocyanins uh, which is very very important factor now can i ask you before we proceed from here what's the difference between anthocyanin and anthocyanidin if you remember anthocyanidin it is the name of a glycon when a anthocyanidin attached to the sugar molecule it becomes a glycoside and the glycoside of anthocyanidin is known as anthocyanins i hope you re uh, remember now we have seen the anthocyanin and anthocyanidin both they play an important role in food industry they are because they are highly used in food industry for two purpose first of all to improve the appearance of uh, uh, food color uh, by providing different color and also they have they are highly beneficial to human health and because of these two reasons they are heavily explored and used in food industry that's why it is important to study the stability of anthocyanins otherwise imagine if anthocyanins or anthocyanidin if you used in coloration of food and if the color degrades after some time it will also affect the shelf life of the food or imagine you buy a food which has a very nice pink color and after few days if the color degrades to dark color from the pink do you think you are going to eat you will not eat it you will throw it considering as a uh, considering it as a spoiled food that's why it is important to know what are the various factors that affects the stability and color of coloration of anthocyanins and how we can increase the stability so today's lecture mainly will focus on the stability part of anthocyanins that means further we will start uh, discuss about the chemistry of anthocyanins so continuing with the chemistry of anthocyanidins and anthocyanins as i mentioned the type and intensity of color of anthocyanins they largely depend on many factors one of the factor is the substitution pattern of the anthocyanidin that is substitution pattern of the glycon part and mainly when we talk about substitution it depends on the substitution pattern of the ring b of the anthocyanidin moiety and it has been observed that if number of hydroxyl groups are more or predominate in ring b the color tends to go uh, goes towards bluish in nature whereas if the number of methoxyl group is more in ring b or methoxyl group predominate color tends to go towards redness okay so you can see how the variation of substitution pattern at ring b can change the color of the anthocyanidin that is the glycon second important factor where the type and intensity of intensity of colors of anthocyanins are largely dependent on is the ph and pattern of glycosylation now at different ph anthocyanidin and anthocyanin both they show different types of color a different coloration for example when the ph is less than 2 it shows intensely red or orange color and if the ph is kept between 2 to 4 then blue sh blue color species prevail whereas the ph between 5 to 6 the colorless anthocyanins are found to be more okay and if the ph is more than 7 anthocyanins are tend to be you know degraded based on their substituents again and it has been observed that the color stability they are decreases towards the neutrality neutrality means towards ph 7 and it has been observed interestingly that ph between at ph between 8 to 9 some anthocyanins 
showed very stable color. For example, uh, some of the anthocyanins, that is glycosides, like three glucosides of pelargonidine, which is found to be stable, okay, around pH 8 to 9, and uh, three glucosides of pyridine and three glucosides of malvidine. All of them they found to show blue color. Now, can I ask you the difference in the uh, chemical structure between pelargonidine, pyridine, and malvidine? Pelargonidine has OH in the uh, uh, hydroxyl group, only one hydroxyl group, and the bitterine B, whereas pyonidine and malvidine they have methoxy group and the bitterine B. Now, talking about the stability of anthocyanidine, it is also found to be mainly influenced by the substitution pattern that is present on ring B. And it has been observed that the additional OH or OCHC group decreases the stability of the anthocyanidine or glycon towards the neutrality. So if you look at the structure, what did I say? If you look at the ring B, additional means more number of OH group or methoxy group at this ring B, if it is present, it decreases the stability of color towards neutrality. Okay. Now based on this concept, look at this chart. Can you tell me which anthocyanidine or anthocyanin of which anthocyanidine will be most stable? Pelargonidine, it has only one OH group. Cyanidine, it has two OH group. Delphinidine, it has three OH group. There's two in R1 and R2 and one already present in uh, fourth position. Whereas in pionidine, it has one methoxy group plus one OH group. Pitunidine, it has one methoxy group and two OH group, that is one at fourth position, one at fifth position. And malvidine, it has two methoxy group, one at third position, one at fifth position of the bitterine along with the OH group. So according to the concept, additional OH or methoxy, that is more number of OH or methoxy, okay, decreases the stability in neutral medium. Now the question is based on this concept, which one in the list you think is the most stable or should be the most stable? The correct answer is pelargonidine because pelargonidine has only one OH group as compared to all other varieties. These are the six most commonly available uh, anthocyanidine in nature. So pelargonidine is the most stable anthocyanidine with one OH group that is present at the fourth position of ring B. Now, <coughs> the color degradation, regarding color degradation, okay, it has been observed that anthocyanidine color or anthocyanidine color may undergo degradation in presence of oxygen, light, ascorbic acid, metal ion, even in presence of certain enzymes, because enzymes may cause degradation of the glycosidic bond, uh, which may even impact in the color. And Already I mentioned uh, an important, the color degradation is considered as one of the most important factor while using it in the, or while incorporating it in food or in food industry for the preparation of different types of food, okay? Because being present in food, if the color is not stable or if the color undergo degradation, okay, it will also hamper the shelf life of the product. So in other words, it is a determinant factor of, uh, of determinant factor of shelf life of the product. So we need to take care of the stability of anthocyanidine. And because anthocyanins are also highly reactive compounds which readily undergo degradation or react with other constituents in mixture and tend to form colorless or brown compounds. Now stability, that's why the stability of anthocyanidine should be increased, okay, in order to retain the color as well as functionality. Now the question is, what measures we should take to increase the stability of anthocyanidines? The stability can be increased in many different ways. One of the most important way or approach to improve the stability of anthocyanidines are glucosylation. And that too, it has been observed that 
glucosylation primary uh, primarily at the third position if you look at the uh, ring C the third position is this one glucosylation at third position increases the stability and solubility of the anthocyanidine okay and five glucosylated structure found to degrade more easily as compared to three glucoside that means five, five glucoside means when a glucose molecule or uh, any sugar mo molecule is attached to the fifth position of ring A okay so which one is more stable three glucosylate when a glucose molecule is attached to uh, 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 the third position of the ring C it forms more stable structure as compared to when a sugar is attached to the fifth position now can you correlate this fact with the previous lecture we discussed something about the um, availability of glycosylated product or availability of uh, anthocyanins in nature based on the point of attachment of sugars if you remember we discussed that three glucosylated anthocyanins are more available as compared to three and five diglucosylated or glycosylated anthocyanins and glycosylation at the hydroxyl groups of beta ring B uh, uh, glycosylation at ring B even though it is possible but it is rare now you know what is the reason the reason is the glycosylation at the third position increases the stability of anthocyanidin and this is why the three glycosylated products are more available in nature as compared to five glycosylated product or three five diglycosylated product okay secondly the stability can also be increased by acylation of sugar moieties or sugar residues okay and this acylation can be done with cinnamic acid like p carmoric acid para carmoric acid caffeic acid ferulic acid and glyco and acylation of sugar moieties can also be done with the help of aliphatic acids like acetic acid melanoic and melanoic acid and succinic acid so these are the various ways you can improve the stability of anthocyanidins i'd like to ask a question here read this question carefully and answer which of the following statement is true regarding the stability of anthocyanidin let me see whether you understood the lecture or not option 1 glycosylation primarily at c3 position of ring c increases the stability option 2 addition of more number of hydroxyl group oh group on ring b increases the stability option 3 acylation of sugar residues of anthocyanins increases the stability option 4 addition of more number of methoxy group on ring b can increase the stability now think properly and tell me which are the correct option it can be only one option or it can be a combination of more than one options which are the correct option a no option a means one and two yes one is correct glycosylation of primarily at three position of ring c increases the stability but how the option two if you remember we said addition of more oh group on ring b not only your oh group addition of more methoxy group also decreases the stability and in that point of view we have seen that pelargonidine which has only one oh group at the ring b has more stability as compared to the other anthocyanidine so the correct option should be the correct option is the acylation of sugar residues of anthocyanin can increase the stability and glycosylation of glycosylation primarily at three position c3 of the ring c can increase the stability that is one in three that means the correct option is correct answer is d okay so we will finish our lecture today here we will continue again in the next lecture that is part 3 of anthocyanins and anthocyanidin thank you very much for your attention see you again